everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, we're at Sergeant Tank's Fish Room. Another YouTuber, check him out if you haven't. He's got a cool shirt and logo. And uh, he's got quite a cool setup going on, a lot of cool things. He's into some lion bears, there's African cichlids, there's turtles, there's, I don't know what else I've seen, discus, uh, severums, blood parrots, all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna go through and uh, I've already seen things. I'm like, why is he doing that? So I'm gonna be asking questions and we'll find out the answer. So if you guys don't know, this is the magical moment where he does all his live streams, his set up here. And, uh, you know, maybe talk about some of the fish that are in here. Sure, um, I think the one that people know me most for, of course, is being the Severum guy. People ask me all the time, they're like, why don't you breed Severums? The simple answer to that is I would never want to get rid of them. <laughs> um, but, uh, so yeah, we have some various Severums. This one's pretty much a runt. It's a rock heel, the red shoulder Severum, hence the uh, the light, we can try to show up here a little bit better. I'm not sure if that's making things worse or better for you. No, well, it's better. Um, so then we just have your normal gold severums. Uh, I think sometimes they get misclassified. Even if you see a little bit of red in there, like okay, it's a you know it's a red spotted severum, which is going to mm -hmm. be a quadruple of you know yep. eight times the price. So Ooh, that was a ghost um, knife. Yep, I've had Ghosty for quite a few years now. Um, the recommended thing, uh, which I've shared before, is do not keep these guys in groups because they'll actually emit like an electronic. Um, they're literally electrocuting each other um, mm -hmm. over time, so it will stress them out. So that's why I recommend only keeping them in one. You can keep like um, some plepris and um, different stuff like that I've kept in here uh, with them as well, and they get along just fine. Um, and then, of course, we got Tank here. Uh, this is the male. This is a, mm. this is a hybridized blood parrot. Uh, then these are just your normal green severums. And of course, the three gold severums. We got the, some electric blue Acara, uh, which is a breeding pair. And then those rainbows, which is going to be... You know, the rainbow cichlid, right? Correct. Yeah. The rainbow cichlids um, are one of my all-time favorites. They're a little bit harder to come by in our market. I had a special order them in. I think they're rare pretty much everywhere now. Um, and they are a, a breeding pair because I've seen it, but of course they ate all the fry because it was in this tank. Yeah. It was actually technically in this tank when they're in there. But um, So I'm gonna eventually breed these guys now that I know that they're actually a, a mated pair. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of when I'm actually gonna put the time into doing it. Sure. Because uh, that's to me, I try to breed most most of the things that I'm able to. And of course we had just have your regular spotted pictus down there. Um, but yeah. Awesome. So this is my, definitely my, uh, probably the favorite tank, you know. <laughs> of course, everybody's well, used yeah, to it behind to the live streams. The time, yep. And then um, this is from KG Cichlids. So Kevin Green uh, oh. sent me this guy. This is uh, Cherokee. He has not, well, I did feed him a little bit. Let's see if he'll come out. Um, now I have a random uh, Daniel in there and just kind of try to get him out, but he didn't pay attention to it. And that is your seven bard or seven line Kagoma uh, Frontosa is something I've been hounding him and hounding about for months and uh, he ended up sending me this guy. So nice. he definitely uh, hooked me up. So here we've got, looks like a, a rack of tens, if you will, floor to ceiling. What do we got going on in some of these? What are some of the highlights? Well, this guy right here. Sure. Uh, these are your um, blue Galaris, uh, just finally getting to that stage where they're starting to show some swatting behaviors. Um, okay. Four Achilles fish, of course, are going to get a little bit larger. You guys can always check out, of course, um, LR Bratz or Lucas Bratz, and it kind of shows like a full-size male and female. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually, I acquired these through uh, Jimmy. So Jimmy oh. of Aquarium Co-op actually uh, passed these along to me, so I'm really excited. Uh, as you can see down here, the reason I just utilize a spawning mop and not a lot of like natural live plants is due to the fact I want to teach these guys to actually lay their eggs in there. And okay. you'll see here in a few moments, uh, once we look at some of the orange liar tail, the reasons why I do that. If you have a ton of like natural plants, they're more egg scatters. So of course you're going to get disbursements of eggs all about, and it's going to make your life a little bit more difficult. Not that it's not 
possible to go ahead and retrieve those eggs, but I just find for me, uh, make my life a little bit easier. That's why I kind of went this route instead. Making your life easier is never a bad thing. Yeah, just simplify it a little bit. Yeah. And then I noticed we have rad, like, Showa swords or whatever they are up uh, here. These are the Xiophorus maculatus. They're the gold leopard platy. Um, oh, so wow. I've been breeding those guys. Um, they've been strange, staying true to their lines for the most part. I've had a few people reach out. I've actually sent out an order of five tomorrow. Uh, which we'll look at here. In I didn't know these were platies. I'd like to buy some of these. <laughs> I assumed they were swords. I did. Well, no, I did a ton of research to ensure um, because I was getting, my gut was leaning about 80%. I knew what they were. And then as I did some research, I wanted to confirm and I've sold some through the club. I've donated. So um, no, they're really easy, uh, easy fish to breed. I mean, so really legit, isn't. I want to buy some. So look for them <laughs> in my fish room at some point because okay. I'll be putting my name at least on a waiting list. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, those are awesome. Yep. So those guys are prolific breeders. Uh, once we get in the bigger fish room, then I'll show you the parents. They kind of look like they've almost got like a like a spade tail to them. Like some of them almost have a little bit of a plume or spade mm -hmm. tail shape. Like I'm really intrigued by that because you don't see, <laughs> in my opinion, many, for lack of a better term, fancy platies. Like yeah, you've got your reds. You've These got are your... more rare. Yes. Yeah. Those yep. I've never seen those before. That, and that's that's. You know, toot my own. Now there's, there might be three people out there on the internet be like, no. right? Well, you yeah, know, they're, but gonna, they're gonna say based like, oh, on common, but I've I've never seen plus them. years of breeding various live bear species. I did my due diligence. I spent about a week researching these guys, and comparing Google images and everything, and just looking at their temperaments and behavior. And I'm I'm comfortable to say, and let alone I've been selling them classified that way through our club a couple of times, and I know the reputation that we have at our club. If they well, and when we see the adults, none have grown out swords, right? What? No, no, no. Yeah, then no, you're. No, no, no. I think you're you're golden nope. on this. Nope. Yeah. Um. So I'm. Yeah, I'm comfortable to say that they're nice. actually a really nice, um, easy librarian species. Not really a whole lot that goes into them. They can handle some well, of a range of. Well, um, yeah. Love so. it. Ooh, what do we got here? Like a rice fish? Is that what's going on over there? Uh, these are the astrol or astral. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Orange liar to Achilles. These so that's guys. That's just a girl there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the male is going to be in the back. I do have algae on here. As anybody that's been following this channel uh, for some time, they know I'm just a big advocate on algae because they'll graze on that stuff all day long. So yeah. Um, but uh, we can get a shot from the back, and you'll actually see probably the male hanging out, or he might be down in here. All right. Um, but yeah, we can pull out here in a few minutes. Almost guarantee that there's eggs in that spawning. We got fry in this tank. Uh, yep. We have some of the platy fry in there. Okay. And these are all 10s, is that right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And the reason I've had this question come up is the balance. These used to actually be shrimp tanks. And okay. with Neocaridina is obviously as they adapt to their surroundings, just as a natural way of blending into their surroundings, I've kind of trained them. I used to have like, uh, you can see some of the snowball shrimp in here, the Neocaridina. Oh yeah. Um, yep. And when I used to have like cherries or even some of your really strains, um, even some of your nice, like a uh, Sakura fire red grade, uh, they would actually adapt back and forth, even though there wasn't mm. really anything else in the tank to act as a quote unquote, something that would go after them. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of my way of been breeding them for a few years. So that's why I've kind of transitioned from a lighter to a darker substrate. Nice. So I know that question has come up. They're like, why do you have a, you yeah. know, so, and so. I think what can help a lot of the viewers is talk about this rack because it's kind of an yeah, off the shelf rack yes. and you know people might freak out saying like hey this is sitting off to the mm -hmm. side and what's been your experience and how long has this been set up? Uh, this has been set up now for a little over a year. Um, okay. Got this at our local Meyer, which is now expanding more south I think even Ohio, Indiana area now. Um, used to be more of a Michigan market. And this was actually on an end cap clearance for like 18 bucks. Nice. Only about 80 to 100. Yeah. So these are, I think, a discontinued. So if anybody is wondering what exactly this is, I couldn't tell you. But there's a lot of similar racks. Like exactly. That. The main thing with tanks is oftentimes people don't understand if they actually look at a tank, the glass underneath has nothing to do with it. The structural integrity is in these frames. You yeah. want to, I find oftentimes, um, individuals are trying to level the tank itself you want to level and plumb uh, the whole stand itself and then everything will naturally fall into place so these guys are actually not on uh, the particle board underneath they're yeah. actually just on the frame as support yep 
I think you can definitely relate because that's what I appreciate about your um, your shop is I know when you design that, I, I believe, aren't you keeping kind of that same concept? Yeah, right? it's only the ends are supported. Yeah. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep a balance. I've had no issues with it. I've uh, been doing that for quite a few years. So. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to tell the entire world to do it, but I've never had an issue either no, doing because it. Because so. you're actually going to cause stress, or, uh, uh, stress fractures and so forth if you end up putting pressure like and a little a little tidbit while we're talking yeah. about that no one else ever brought that up on camera and i've never made a dedicated video yeah but i've seen people blow out the bottom panels by setting it on uh styrofoam with glass tanks correct really common yes. in acrylic tanks but people don't realize that the glass when it sinks down in it can actually bust the silicone yes. seal out of it <coughs> because glass <coughs> tanks are made differently than acrylic mm -hmm. tanks yep so yeah i'm glad that and then this, I just saw this at a pet store and I've seen it here now. This is a whole different, like, what, what is this mat? Like it's a that flat, is a but... cobalt mat from Lowe's. A so cobalt it, mat? It's by Cobalt. Oh, like, yeah, they're actual -E brand, right? Correct. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, I want to say they come in. Is that going like a, like the tool drawer? It would be. You're going to find it over in your hardware section and toolbox section. So okay. not the actual shelving section. Yep. Um, not that they, you know, that was back when I got it, uh, but I actually um, obtained this idea through uh, Ben at Watercolors. Which yeah, is, great uh, store, by the here. way, that I went and saw that. So, yeah, kind of got then, the idea from them. How how much is this stuff? Just so people are, am I looking at spending 20 bucks? Or am uh, I looking five into... foot roll, I don't know, maybe 18 inches wide, sure. let's say. Something roughly uh, like about that. 10 bucks. Oh, wow. Yep. So yeah, you could really jazz up a, a jewel mm -hmm. stand or something like that for ten buck. Man, yep. you can go to Home like Depot. A, it's like a rubber. And you will see the mat difference. I like this better, but you will save a little bit of money at Home Depot through the HDX manufacturer sure. brand or something. It kind of feels like Rhino Liner or something like that, like mm -hmm. on a truck bed. Very heavy duty. And yep. obviously, you haven't noticed any problems, like it got wet and then dripped into a tank or anything. Like no, not no, no chemical issues or mm -hmm. anything. No. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Mm -hmm. I'll probably incorporate some of that somewhere because I like the I like it when you, you know, like obviously this view that we're looking at right now is much better than this view. Yeah. You know, so it, it really you know helps kind of finish and polish. When I stand did this like stand this. aesthetically, I want to be sitting on that couch looking yep. in here and feel like I'm looking in like a yeah. fish shop. And it does do that. So that was kind of my basis behind. Yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So then, let's see, over here, I know this is kind of a cool thing. This is all like cube tanks or something. These I acquired from an area about 45 minutes uh, southeast of us, and it was actually a closed down saltwater shop. So these were actually saltwater at one point, and they're already uh, drilled, and I just obtained oh. the bulkheads, and I used to have, which we have in storage, used to have four identical to this up here. Then I had a customized few hundred gallon sump system with different baffles I built into it. Uh, kind of a wet dry combination. And I used to breed a lot of uh, different grades of uh, Neocaridinia shrimp and okay. placos and snails pretty much as a community uh, breeding setup at that time. And also um, the uh, microgeophagus. So needless to say, the reason I went to individualized systems now where I don't run anything on a localized is I learned the hard way. I was one of those people, if it wasn't broke, why fix it? And I end up losing almost a thousand of my sister's Plecos and a bunch of shrimp due yep. to unfortunate rookie mistake I made of not quarantining something for the appropriate amount of time. So I got lazy. So do these like just drain water now or do they, you can yep. just overfill? They all are that? flowed down to a uh, built-in floor drain and okay. everything is ran on through the carbon block which i've shown on the video before oh yeah yeah um and uh we don't deal a whole lot with uh chloramines but more chlorines in our source and i only have to replace that thing uh the ones on this system is the 40 breeder and then these four i want to say about every three months is is plenty sufficient and okay. i don't find any issues uh whatsoever and nice. i don't add any additional dechlorinate or anything so what do we got going over here kind of, I feel like it's a little mad scientist lab down here. <laughs> so we got Dum Dum, a uh, female here. This is your red eared slider. Uh, we took her in. I rescued her from one of our LFSs. Uh, you can see here, um, the shell is getting a little bit better, um, but the way I look at, for most turtles anyway, and I know that you're definitely a turtle guy as yeah. well, 
um, is it's starting to kind of flatten itself out. There was a lot of this going yeah. on. Is that um, way too much protein that does that? Is that what the, it does appear? Imbalance of bile. Uh, okay. Diet. Yeah, a lot of yeah. times it is um, too much excess protein. Yep. And what I'll do now is I take them and I'll bring them over to my little wash tub. And usually once a week, I try to take them out, let them exercise, yep. as well as um, besides their basking area, which they do oftentimes. It's cute because they'll actually all, uh, three of them in here right now, will actually get on top of each <laughs> other and they'll bask. But um, I'll take them out and I'll actually do an Epsom salt bath on them for oh. a couple of minutes. And then I'll go ahead and wash them down. They actually like it. So. Um, and why do you do that? The Epsom salt, I just, as far as I think it kind of helps in aiding. Um, okay. For me anyways, from doing some research and looking at other individuals who who keep these uh, specific species of turtle yep. and other various turtles. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just, I've always been an Epsom salt guy. I just think it really helps aid in benefiting some of the uh, shell structure and just sure. kind of any um, bacterial issues that might be going on. So. All right. So yeah, you got there to win another one to swing them off. Yeah, and this is what the is it the hundred gallon tote or hundred fifty gallon? It is. Gallon yep. or, okay. From Tractor Supply. Yep. I got these yeah. actually. I got a super deal on them. Uh, they were already on sale. Plus I had a twenty dollar off coupon. Nice. So I got them both at the same time. Normally these run. I want to say eighty bucks a piece. They were already on sale for maybe fifteen twenty under that on top of a twenty dollar off coupon. So you did well. Yeah. And then what's going on in this uh, thing? I know you would like this one because you being a guppy guy. I am um, a guppy guy. So let me see if I can grab my strainer here. Okay. And your guess is as good as mine is what could be in there. I'm pretty much just letting these guys go absolutely crazy. Okay, so like to the mix. Correct. Um, got a bunch of babies in here. We do a lot of uh, mystery snails. Got rainstorm snails. I got a sister's plecos between albino and your chocolate variant or your regular browns. And then various guppies. Uh, there might be some endlers in here too. I can't. I try to pull most of those guys out. And then I've had sometimes people ask me, why do you keep bile balls in there? And the yeah. reason it is is the, the babies, even the plecos, will eat off of any little microorganisms on there. Ah. So that's why I do that. Yeah, I knew one. I visited one fish room where they. Uh, they were doing that, and so the fry could get up there and hide from the parents. That is a natural way as well. Yeah. Yep. And I use these to help um, jumpstart. Uh, the nitrogen cycle or nitrification cycle yeah. or setup. Just like I do with pot scrubbers. Yep. I think most people know me like, you keep pot scrubbers, you float them every one of your tanks. You know, this one's sank. And I was like, you don't realize how much good beneficial bacteria is in one of those. So, yep. And I'll send these to people too. So I don't oh, advertise these good, on the website, yeah, but if, good idea. I just charge a small fee um, and then whatever shipping is, usually it kind of is an add on. So. The main thing is it's at their own discretion because, you know, a liability and stuff like that. If anything yep. happened, you know, they're going to come back to Sergeant Tank and be like, you kill everything in my colony. Yeah, well, I, I did I tell you. they're doing something like that. That's like a, we thought about doing cycled sponge filters, but yep. the problem was they were really heavy for shipping and they took up a lot of space. Sure. But something like that, that makes a lot and of I sense. And I have done cycled. I try to keep, you'll see in some of the tanks where I do keep maybe one or two uh, uh -huh. in there just to help people out. And I've done that a few times. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So let's then, let's see what you got in here, cause I'm 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 <laughs> foaming at the mouth, going, oh my god, this is I awesome. Probably got some rare. It um, doesn't even have to be rare. It just looks awesome right now. Yeah, the fact that you can just scoop up a bunch of awesome. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of guppies in here. There's hundreds, yeah. And what do you do with these? Do you sell them to a store? Or? I'm not selling them at all right now. I'm hoarding them. Okay. <laughs> so you're doing the corn You got strategy. me into the guppy thing, so thanks, Corey. <laughs> uh, I grew up on the guppy thing, and then I got back into the guppy thing. So I'm just working with different lines. I'm just having fun with it. Um, yeah. Is the main thing right now. I think actually at 55 over there, which we'll probably look at in like a few minutes, um, I think I might end up doing like a, just an all guppy thing in that. So... And ex I think I, I realize now, but explain these, the red and white. These? Yeah. These are, uh, my wife Katie actually came up with the name. I came up with the concept is, um, I customize, I mean, they're very, I've done videos on it, but you can make your own spawning mops. Yeah. Um, very easy to do, just 100% acrylic. Uh, you can go to any Walmart buyer, paint it for 250 for like Yeah, I think there's one right here that's, and yeah, there you what go. I do is, we call them the Baba Breeder. 
The Baba Breeder, okay. Baba Breeders. The reason is, hence the name, using the bobber instead of using like a piece of cork yeah. or something like that or styrofoam in order to flotate, then all you have to do is if I want that bad boy to sink, you just unclip it and you drop it. Ah. That's it. <laughs> That's nice. And then obviously- It's way harder to find corks for me than it is bobbers. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to any like fishing place and be like, oh, let me grab some bobbers. So. So here's my next question. This is the one I saw earlier and I yeah. don't know the answer. Yes. Explain to me why most sponge filters are off the ground in your tanks. That's the trick. Uh, that's what I, well, I'm seeing. It's, you know, that we see it done once, loophole. you go, well, okay, but right. every tank is that I was waiting way. for somebody to ask me that because yeah. that one person, when I put out this under a hundred dollar irrigation air system ran off from a diaphragm pump that's only rated for eight devices and I have what 62 plus running well yeah. more than that on the fry rack system. yeah probably over 70 the reason that is is I use these I trust out different methods I had to raise it up because the ah. amount of pressure that's sent yeah, to each one pressure so I manipulated it by just simply raising it. okay so if I drop that thing raising. down yeah. yes it will not get the flow that I'm looking for because I was, hammer it out. I was thinking, I was like looking at this tank and I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy. I think I know what he's doing here. He's making it so his fish don't hide under the sponge filter. <laughs> I had my own <laughs> own idea and it turns out it's yep. back pressure. That makes sense. Yep. That's all right. So yeah, that means. So you won the magical prize of brownie points for today of being the first <laughs> one to ask me because nobody, I've been waiting for one person to ask. Why on some of your tanks do you have them raised? Yeah, I see it on you know quite yeah. a few of them. That's yeah. where I was going. Nobody's okay, ever asked. He's got to have some <laughs> kind of trick to this. And yep. well, the trick is you're saving money by using uh, a smaller air pump and not Correct. nearly as many watts. Mm -hmm. So in that thing, uh, I've what is that? I like got twenty watt one or something like that. Yeah, not very use. much. Yeah, and um, I I check the before I put out the video. I maintain the overall temperature. I want to say those are only rated. Probably don't want to push beyond like maybe 120 degrees or something like that yeah. Fahrenheit. Um, but uh, yeah, I can maintain that thing right around 80, 90, so I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, I'll show you guys over here. This, do you grab this one like on uh, like? I got that one Amazon from a guy through or? our club. So a buddy okay. of mine through our club. It was used for 20 bucks. Nice. So 20. That's that's some insane value. 20 dollar air pump. Yep. Supports 60 aquariums. Pretty much. And then I broke down all the cost analysis yeah. when I did the video on. We'll put a link to that this. video right here. <laughs> Bing. So, yeah, my main thing is trying to save. Uh, that was one thing I wanted to prove because I'm the guy that wants to prove what people think you can't generally do. Sure. So, considering running that many tanks in, I surprisingly had some excellent feedback because people are now just getting into the fish rooms and they're actually waiting three or four weeks until I actually release the video. Yeah. People that don't necessarily, that aren't on YouTube, just other buddies of mine, they're like, okay, I'm waiting for you to release that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna release until I feel comfortable. Right, you to wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna like catch on fire in any, a month or Exactly, something. yes. Yeah, I, I hear that because, yep. you know, with, with uh, you know that many viewers comes great responsibility. You know, if, if 50 people buy that thing yep. and it's a horrible thing, you wasted 50 people's money and time. So, yeah. And speaking of safety, you'll see in everyone, definitely recommend. A I've got extinguisher. Yep, so. I've got that. Luckily, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had to use nope. one yet, but I do have them in my fish yes. room as well. Yep. Because that's you always hear the the stories of like, yeah, their fish room burned to the ground. You yep. know, and then you, your hope is that it only burned the fish room and not like the entire house to the ground. You sure. know. And it's anytime you're mixing that much water, that much electricity, that type of thing, you know, we think we do everything right, but it takes one, oops, I didn't know. Exactly. You know, so. And then the uh, gold leopard platy parents are in tank four. They're going to be hiding behind oh, me. Oh, uh, you magically marked correctly. Exactly. <laughs> just for you. I knew you were going to be going to that one. <laughs> That's a sponge filter I've never seen before. Got it's got those. a flat side and it goes into the bottom. I don't know where I acquired those, yeah. Oh my Another god, these platies are amazing. I don't know how much you charge for them, but I'm buying them. Super cheap. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> right I, now anyway. I, I guarantee Until you, I can get this... enough out there, then they will increase yeah, in price. When I that video you. comes out, people are going to hound you nonstop. So I better get them now while before <laughs> the entire internet is, Jeremy, when are more coming? You better, you need to, 
they're take my all favorite your fry platy. and get about 15 more tanks of those going because when this drops yeah, there might be fry in there right now those are really nice i like those a and lot i do pull uh because they will eat their fry. yeah so i just pulled a day or two ago so i think i don't think there's any more but they uh she'll slowly release you won't do it all at once and this is why i come to fish rooms because even though i watch your videos you don't pick up on everything and you don't get to watch every video yeah. and somehow i'm here i'm like had i known well, i don't show everything okay see there we go okay <laughs> i don't show everything okay. that's the thing and if i do it's very little because i don't feel hints. as bad for missing yeah. now because i'm like man he has a fish that i really want to own <laughs> and i didn't even know yeah so what's up uh we got over here, these are just a nice strain of endlers you got going, I think. Yep, those are just your common Placelia wing eye. I've uh, been yeah. breeding those for a lot of years. Um, those are prolific breeders. I think there's some fry in here. Uh, these guys do pretty good. More of those mops, I, the bobber mops. Bobber mop. Uh, you'll see a lot of my tanks, absolutely. I think it's an essential on top of natural plants. Yeah. No, that's good. And then you got the mystery snails. Oh, you've yeah. got good, I think you've got good snail water though, right? You got some hardness in there. It's finding the balance, and I do not incubate the snails. We can look at that. Um, like, is your water fairly hard out of the tap, or? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty much will match uh, I'm a little Lake jelly. Malawi pretty much out of the oh, tap. Oh, man. So, <laughs> yeah. We're fortunate, yeah. Pretty much awesome. Yeah, yep. you know, if, if you're going to make me say it, I have to say I have amazing water. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because look at these mystery snails down here, just looking awesome with the Celestial Pearl Danios. Yep. Man. Probably breeding up a storm in that mop too. And I keep those with guppies just to kind of act as a, uh, not really a dither, but they will get out and active. I mean, they're very active with me. Um, yeah. So I know oftentimes people say, hey, you never see them. But for the me, they're always, does help, yeah. they're always engaging and they're always very, uh, at least these guys, I'm fortunate, they're very interactive. Right. So I know I want to show, well, more things off, but Back here, I think this system's cool, and I know you've put the video out on it, but I haven't watched it yet. But I did yeah. see the video come out, so get back in there and let's take a look at this stuff. Sure. This is the fry rack system for essentially under 20 bucks. You can get all of these from your Dollar Tree. What I like about these is these lids already come. Not that it's a big deal, yeah. you know, to drill them or, you know, heat up a screwdriver. through. Yep. But they already come off. Just hop it. That's perfect size oh, wow. I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, so I do have a video on it. Everything is with a airflow control valve and you can fit, you know, the only one I don't have done yet is uh, the bottom rack. Um, just cause it's harder for me physically to tend yeah, down yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, and this is all ran off from that same nice irrigation system. And then in here, I just have a date and orange liar tail. I got four embryos or eggs yep, yep. that I'm raising up. I just use methylene blue, uh, Daisy's rice fish. Um, that are also I what I do here is I just pull the mops they'll lay their nice. eggs in the mops and the embryos are growing out in there and then I have some uh, free swimming orange liar tail I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up because of the tannins I got a couple of guys in here um, I will be doing an in-depth video on people keep asking me like when are you gonna do a video on breeding killifish but I just haven't got around to doing it yet Sure. Um, I mean, they're not, they're not too difficult to do. It's just the hardest thing I find is you can get things to spawn all day long. That's a million dollar question, Jeremy. What's easy to breed? And to me, it's yeah. like, how much time do you want to invest in? That's it? a so, good point. Yep. Um, there is a couple in there. Um, I just, yeah, they're right there. They're just fed them this morning. Sure. And I'll usually feed them about three or four times a day, vinegar eels, and eventually I'll transition them over to micro worms. Nice. And then once they get to a size they feel comfortable with, um, then I'll go ahead and throw them like in a five and a half or a 10 gallon tank. Then we have, uh, we got some, uh, Thai placot butter fry in here. Um, oh, nice. So yeah, I do. Breeding about everything. Yeah. yeah. So like my mad scientist thing and then more various, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, the mycogeophagus. When I bred those things a decade ago, they would feed off from uh, microworms all day long but apparently I'm thinking because of the uh, the embryo size with the genetic lines of these microgeos they are just smaller a little bit smaller oh. to where they didn't get enough and unfortunately I lost probably 50 30 of my yield so mm -hmm. um, you live and you learn so that's kind mm -hmm. of a tip is just keep it simple just I recommend doing vinegar eels this is an point. awesome tank 
Um, yep, this is your uh, the Marmo Cribs self coin crayfish. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm slowly getting out of crayfish. It's, I think besides being a Placo guy, that's what they know me for too is crayfish. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm kind of getting out of it. I use them now. Uh, believe it or not, is any genetic deficiencies, I'll feed them my turtles. There you go. Great calcium source too. Yep. So they are still available on the website, but uh, the great thing with, is you only got to buy one of these and then they replicate. Exactly. And there's a bunch holding. Then you'll see crazy again with the spawning mops. Nice. So yeah, what size tank? This is a 60 gallon Marineland. Um, had no issues. I know some issues people had. This actually came from PetSmart, deal of the century. Um, it was actually the last one that they had. They had the uh, full ensemble uh, along with the lights. I got this thing quite a few years back. Um, don't remember how much I paid for. I know I saved about 100, 150 bucks. Yeah. Um, the manager kind of knew me there because uh, I'd done some business with them in the past. So. He worked it out with me. There's a few little scratches on the ensemble, so they went ahead and just gave me, which they usually never do, um, right off the shelf. It was actually the last unit they had, so nice. I was fortunate enough to kind of snag a deal. Yeah. Um, These guys have been spawning for you, right? They have, but they keep eating their fry, and I'm going to put an end to it because I'm going to actually pull the fry. Nice. So when I first acquired them from Jimmy, um, got them here within that first week, I did have a yield of maybe four or five. Um, Fortunately, I didn't have uh, the appropriate, like, I had vinegar eels or brine shrimp or something like that. They weren't feeding off from the microworms because of the embryos and the yeah. size of them. There wasn't much I could do, and unfortunately, I didn't have the source in town to achieve what I needed to to feed them. Mm -hmm. So, needless to say, of course, I lost everything within a couple of days. So, I know that they are a valid breeding pair. Now, it's just a matter of actually obtaining and then uh, artificially raising out the, which is not what I want to do with discus because that was one of my greatest desires as a C. Um, like their body feeding. I exactly. Hey guys, here we are. We're done at Sergeant Tank's house and now we're hanging out with Luna and Link, which I don't know if these have ever been on your channel before, but they are adorable and super nice and I'm ultra jealous of your little <laughs> birds. Well, I'm not little, they're pretty big. Um, but yeah, what kind of parrots are they? These are an eclectus. Um, what's cool about this specific type of bird is, of course, being a parrot, is you have uh, Luna here, which is the female, and always show this coloration, and the males will always be this coloration, so it makes it a little bit uh, easier. But my wife is way more in depth. If she was here right now, she could totally nerd out and yeah, yeah. go completely technical, but yeah. I was just wanting to hold one. <laughs> <laughs> and very, so, very tame and very gentle. Yes. So make sure you check out Sergeant Takes channel if you never have. Uh, I watch it, does a lot of live streams. You already saw, we've linked to some videos in this video. And then he does a lot of DIY stuff. And in general, kind of just a cool channel to be on the radar. And I have it in my repertoire of like, oh yeah, there's a thousand videos that hit my feed. And I wouldn't take it out. So make sure you check it out and we'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks guys.